Good evening, Friday Night Football fans. Welcome to Homecoming 2021. We're here at Heflin Field on the campus of Deer Creek High School for tonight's matchup between the Northwest Class of Knights and your Deer Creek Antlers. This broadcast is brought to you by Antler Vision, the student-based, student-run organization which gives students the opportunity to receive hands-on training in the field of video broadcasting and programming. Antler Vision will be broadcasting and streaming live for all of the remaining home football games this year, so be sure to take advantage of this incredible program over the remainder of the home schedule if you can't make it here to support the team in person. My name is Rick Harris, and I'm joined by my partner tonight who will give us his analysis and color commentary. He's one of the students in Antler Vision. His name's Ian Hickey. Ian, what's your take on tonight's homecoming game? Well, we're set for a very windy and very warm game tonight. Uh, temperature is in the upper 80s, even the 90s. Uh, low is supposed to be around 75 if we even get there. Uh, the wind is gusty, coming from the south to the north at approximately 15 to 20 miles an hour. Summer's making one last stand here against that autumn weather, <laughs> and it will yes. be hot on the turf for both teams. Yeah. We're ready. Are you ready for Antler Vision tonight? We'll be, uh, but first. Yeah, let's let's cut cut away here just a second. We'll get ready to go to the to the homecoming. We'll get ready to go to homecoming ceremonies here in a moment. But uh, we wanted to. Looks like they're gathering together down below and um, should be starting any 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 time now. Um, since we have a few minutes, let's go ahead and take a look at the visitors from Northwest Classen. The Knights come in with a record of zero wins and five losses. They open the season with Classen, uh, followed by Douglas High School and John, Mar John Marshall. They were shut out in three consecutive games and are only averaging three points per game. Now that's good for a role player on a basketball team, but it's not so much for a high school football team in 6A. <laughs> Could be a struggle, don't you think, Ken? <laughs> yeah. Their defense is giving up a whopping 58 points per game, so I'm sure Coach Stanley is looking at this game as a possible chance to see a lot of his role players in a varsity setting. Get some of those JV kids in and see what, see what they can do. Uh, the Knights are going to feature a spread offense. Um, they'll have five wide receivers with no running back. It's going to be interesting to see how the Antlers will cover this. Um, they've only have six seniors on the entire squad of 32 members, and three of those seniors are going to play major roles on the offensive side of the ball. They are DJ Hall, who's the senior quarterback. He can do a lot of damage with his ability to get out of the pocket and run. He's not a great passer, but he's able to connect with his fellow s senior receivers. Number three, Kalen Crawford, who scored a, a touchdown, a rare touchdown for the Knights last, last week against Lawton. And number four, Khalil R Rankin, who also scored a touchdown last week. Plus, he has the kickoff return for a touchdown in the game's opening uh, matchup. With Northwest only having nine total upperclassmen, not much to show on the positive side. So... With no longer further ado, let's go down to the field. It's homecoming, and we're going to take you down on the field live for the homecoming court and introductions.
Welcome back. We are here ready for kickoff here in just a few moments here at Heflin Field for Deer Creek versus Northwest Classen. We've talked a little bit about Northwest Classen, and my buddy here, Kieran, is going to tell us a little bit about the antlers. I think probably Coach Stanley's biggest concern in a game like this when you're facing a team that hasn't won any games is to keep the boys focused. You know, they got the Bombers next week at Rose Field, so that's one of his biggest challenges. But, Kieran, what are the what are the big keys for the antlers tonight as they take on the Knights? Well, you know, the antlers are coming off a big win against PC North to kind of solidify solidify themselves uh, as an actual playoff contender, uh -huh. you know, that yep. places them at 4-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the division, and uh, their only loss was in double overtime against that solid Stillwater team, right. so uh, they're a real team, and I, I actually got a chance to interview with Coach Stanley before this game, so I think we're going to cut to that right now. How energized would you say are your players coming off of the win last week? Well, it was a great team win for us. Uh, we, we felt like that, that our guys were prepared to play, and they went out and, and played a really strong game. Um, you know, we, we tell them each week that, that each district game is equally important and that each week, you know, I mean, uh, the game that we're playing is the most important game uh, of the year because it's the next game. Mm -hmm. So they're excited about this week, and, and uh, they'll be ready to play. Uh, knowing that Northwest Classen's record of 0-5, what are a few keys to the game this week? Well, I think the key for us is just to, to go play our best. And, and the focus all week long has been more on, on our football team than anybody else's team. And at most, most weeks, that's the case. We'll be prepared. Um, we'll, we'll be ready for the, the team we're playing. But it's more important for us to have great practice days, to get better each week. And then as the season progresses, if we can do that each week, then we're going to be playing our best football at the end of the year. Who are you expecting to have a good game against Northwest Class on this Friday? Well, honestly, I expect all of them to have a good <laughs> game. We always do. We love our guys, and, and uh, we have high expectations for them, and they put high expectations on themselves. And, and so, uh, you know, we're, we'll be excited to get going. How are you keeping your players focused with all of the homecoming festivities going on? Now, that's a great question. You know, there's, there's a lot of things going on this week, um, which is great for the student body. and. And, uh, you know, I, I think our number one priority is just to, to make sure that, that we keep our focus on the task at hand, which is playing our football game on Friday night. And uh, that's not to say that these guys can't enjoy the week and enjoy homecoming, uh, but we feel like that, that we ought to be mature enough as a team to, to be able to do that and then also be able to, to be focused and, and be ready to play the game. Alrighty, and I think that's all of our questions. So thank you so much. You bet. Thank you guys. Taylor Russell will be joined by umpire Dwayne Hayes, linesman Caleb Dirksen, line judge Terrell Spears, and the back judge Chris Greve. 
Last week we saw the, the Antlers go into enemy territory over at Putnam North Stadium, their new stadium just from last year, I believe. Uh, Ian mentioned it, that they went in and really uh, had a huge win on the road. And um, quarterback Brett Pence had an outstanding, outstanding game. He threw for over 300 yards, 20 for 32. Uh, just, a, just a perfect night, three touchdowns plus one on the ground. Um, I think he's easily going to surpass last year's passing totals of 1,500 yards for the year. Um, he's already passed the 1,000-yard mark for the year with that 300-yard performance last Friday. Pence has a core of receivers who he likes to spread the wealth around, uh, led by the seniors Gavin Smith, who last week caught two passes for 25 yards, the, the always electric Javion Jones, who had four catches for 75 yards. Remember, against Stillwater, he had the 80-yard TD catch, which really turned the game in the favor of the Antlers at that time. Uh, juniors, uh, Taylor Tomlin caught one pass last week, but it was a big one for the touchdown for 30 yards, 30-yard 30 touchdown. But the big night last week, and the leading receiver for the uh, Antlers is Junior Berkeley Dalton. He has really become Pence's go-to guy. He's already got over 200 yards catch, uh, receiving and um, right at 19 to 20, 19 catches for uh, a little over 200 yards. So he's having a great year as a junior, and uh, he's kind of become Pence's go-to guy. Um, mm. have the yeah, you really said it. You know, they went in there and they handled that game nicely. They were leading 28 to zero at halftime, and the game ended up being 38 to 13. So they played that first half nearly perfect. And it, Brett Pence, he was on target all game, and we'll see if he can replicate that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and it's going to be you know, on paper and the way you l it looks. I mean, high school football is so strange. It, it looks like he could have a banner night tonight. Looks like the Knights are going to receive. Uh, the ball starting out. The captains are leaving the field as both teams get prepared to enter. Uh, I mentioned next week on the road against Midwest City, yep. the Bombers have always, they're kind of like Stillwater, they've <laughs> always given us a lot of problems, and we have to go over to Rose Field, and that is one of the most difficult places in the state of Oklahoma to win a football game. And you talked about high school football being strange, and we can <laughs> definitely we can hold a candle to that because last home game, you know, we I was the as the Antlers run out on the field on talking, um, we saw what was it two fumbles in one play, we saw several interceptions, double overtime, so crazy game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> so now what that you mentioned that the defense, uh, the opportunistic defense that's holding teams to what. 13, would you say 13.8 points? I believe, yeah, it's 13.8 points per game. Uh, and that, that includes the 35 points that were given up against Stillwater in double overtime. Um, but the team the, the team defense, they got five interceptions on the year, three fumble recoveries, and nine sacks. And a couple of those turnovers have turned into touchdowns. So the defense has really carried the load. Yeah, they've been doing a lot, but definitely there's no shortcoming in the offense there. You know, 36 points per game. So <laughs> both averaging about five touchdowns per game to that defense only allowing about two, you know, that's that's really been a attributing factor to most of their games. Yeah, and the fact that they're 4-1 and one and uh, this close, I mean, just inches <laughs> close to uh, being 5-0 and oh and, you know, in the driver's seat of the, of the district. But tonight it's um, – like I said before, it's a mismatch in a lot of ways. Northwest Classen has 32 members on their squad, uh, only six seniors, and two of them are kickers, um, three juniors, and then the rest are sophomores, and the majority of that rest are freshmen. They start a lot of freshmen, and they got a lot of kids that are going both ways. And, you know, they've just struggled mightily to be able to put anything good together. Uh, they've been blown out. Uh, three straight weeks, they were shut out, uh, gave up over 60 points in two of those three games. So mm -hmm. it looks pretty good for the for the Antlers tonight, yeah. what would you say? But, you know, you talk about, you know, they're playing a lot of freshmen, and over the next three or four years, those freshmen gain experience. So we'll see how they're playing, you know, in around yeah. that time. We'll get them in the next couple yeah. of years, absolutely. So 
you always got to be prepared, you know. You, you, s you see that they're starting a lot of younger guys, and, you know, you're underestimating them. And as those guys age and get more experience, they get better and better. That's the hope, and if they can keep those kids out. They've got five, five kids, including three starters, out tonight for injury. So that, again, that stuff just doesn't help. We're going to see the Deer Creek defense first. Um, they're going to be led by uh, sophomore Sam linebacker Kevin Sanjay, who's got over 25 tackles this year already. He was really a big factor in the Stillwater game. He made a lot of big plays, so. Yeah, Shinji has been a really big force on the defense, so even in the JV games, he's been playing both, so we'll see how he does here. Senior Grayson Miller is set to kick off, and he booms it deep into the back of the end zone for a touchback, and so we'll see Northwest Classen and the Knights come on the field first with their spread offense on the 20-yard line. And we'll see that really, you know, that strong Antler defense come out first, and you know, Northwest Classen trying to get off on, on a good foot, try and get that touchdown. Uh, but that antler defense is strong, so. Here we go. Barton, are you ready? I am. Yes. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> we better be. It's game time. <laughs> so, again, number three, or I'm sorry, number two, D.J. Hall is their quarterback. There you see four wideouts to the left side, one lone receiver to the right. Deer Creek in their classic 3-4 set. Quick pass out and dropped by number five, Zachary Mockelman. I'm sorry, number three, Kalen Crawford, who was who <laughs> has been his favorite receiver over that's the last couple of games. That's Go ahead. definitely not something you want to see, you know, coming off the bat, you know, throwing a short, quick pass, you know, and it's dropped right there. And you can definitely feel the presence of that antler defense, you know, that breath on your neck. Yep, absolutely. Hall's got a lot of, uh, of speed, and, and he's able to make a lot of people miss. He's also got another receiver in Khalil um, Rankin, who also makes a lot of people miss. So if they can get the ball in open spaces, they're pretty tough. There's Hall's brought down about the 20-yard line. I believe that's number 23, and that's going to be Braden Beers. You know, he's, he's a junior and he played a lot last year on the varsity as well and you know they've they've really wanting to make a star out of him and he starts off the night here with a sack so we'll see how they do here on third down and third and long 10, yeah know. i think the defense the defensive coordinator may want to dial it up maybe bring some heat to keep hall from getting out in the open field because that's really their biggest threat is you know letting him escape and get that long run third and ten we're just opening here on homecoming night here at Deer Creek Field. Again, he makes somebody miss. Hall gets to, but he's finally brought down by a swarm of antlers, loss of about six. And that's that's number 60, Cyrus Shying, and number 23, Braden Beers. So once again, Braden Beers making a statement. That's his, you know, second sack of the night. So I think we're about to have a big night here by this antlers defense. Going deep's number one, JV on Jones. What I said was the electric JV on Jones. <laughs> the guy just makes stuff happen, doesn't he? Yeah. A lot of fun to watch. Not only did he have that 80 yard catch, but he also had the interception in that Stillwater game. So he had a big night that night. Quick kick by the uh, Knights, and he didn't get much of it. He, <laughs> in fact, he shanked it to about the 22 yard line, is where they're marking it. Will be first and ten for the for the antlers deep in Northwest Class and territory. And out comes that antlers offense led by led by Brett Pence. You know, three hundred yards last game. He's looking to he's looking to beat that. So as that wind is still blowing, feels in about ninety degrees outside. So you know those boys are hot. In the backfield is Deontay Wilson, who's been who's rushed for over four hundred yards this year so far. And then the three wideouts to the left and single to the right. Hand off to Wilson. Wilson cuts back to the middle. He's down the middle. He's to the five. In the end zone. Touchdown. Antlers. And there's Deontay Wilson, you know, the short but quick, you know, junior. Five foot seven, 161. He's able to find his hole, break away, get in there for the Antlers. 
as they strike on their first play of the Very game. Very first play, you got to like that. 22-yard run. Uh, he made somebody miss early, and then there was really nobody around. He had an escort into the end zone with about three receivers downfield blocking for him as Miller slams it through for the extra point. And just like that, 9.58 to go in the first quarter. Deer Creek 7, Northwest Classen 0. It's a good start. Yeah, and, you know, after only having about 3.6 yards per carry last game to start off a game like that, about 22 yards for a touchdown, you know, that's what you like to see if you're that running back, Deontay Wilson. Definitely. So, I mean, uh, you know, maybe when you look at a team like Northwest Class and that has struggled, you know, they see the first play, uh, they don't get any, they don't get a punt that they they give them any kind of breathing room and you know and you have a quality running back and a quality line by the way our line is dynamite led hey. by uh ou signee jacob sexton six foot six 306 over on the right tackle side that's right where wilson <laughs> ran and they've been playing great all year they've been holding blocks for not only deontay wilson but also brett pence having plenty of time in the pocket so here's miller ready to kick it off again he booms it again both uh, Rankin and Crawford just kind of look at each other and say, we can't, we can't touch that. <laughs> so back to Northwest Classen's ball on their own 20-yard line. And honestly, right after that kind of three and out followed by the first play touchdown, you know, your morale can't be too high after it. So we'll see how they come back. Kind of yeah, let's see how they respond yeah. here. See if they have. See if they can keep you know, their spirit uh, alive. Both Hall, Crawford, and Rankin are all seniors. So these guys, I mean, th this is their year. This is the year that they, they yeah. want to make something happen. They know they're, they're surrounded by a lot of young guys. But here we go. First and 10, 20-yard line. Quick pass to Rankin over on the right side, and he's quickly wrapped up. He stays up for a little while, you know. Two or three guys pushing against him, able to stay on his feet and keep pushing. Number nine, Eli Dunn, makes the, makes the play. Pickup of one. And that's going to that's gonna set them up with a better than last time second down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll take every, <laughs> every foot, every inch, every yard they can get. Because right now I think they're a negative yardage overall. You know, I coached a long time, and the, the biggest fear on homecoming and then homecoming with an, uh, an opponent that you feel like you should handle is focus. Stay in focus. Yeah. Stay with your assignments. Don't go off book. So second and nine. Looks like we're going to have a penalty. We'll see what this is here. Delay of game on the offense. So, you know, they need to be watching the play clock, able to keep it in mind but while they're getting ready to snap the ball. And that's really not an issue you see a lot in high school through NFL, but it's it's always a threat that lingers. That's true. I mean, it, and these are the kind of the mistakes that teams that are struggling uh, make. Um, quick pass out to number intended for number ten, Xavier Nicholson, junior wide receiver. And you talked earlier about you know trying to keep the players focused, and I I actually asked that in my interview with a. Uh, Coach Stanley, and he just said, you know, that's that's a real challenge, but we like him to have fun, but I think these boys, you know, they're mature enough, and they're able to keep in their heads and get set for the game on yeah. Friday. Yeah, you know, we're a senior-laden team. we got a yeah. lot of seniors, so those guys, you know, they don't they don't want to have any hiccups. They don't want to have any bad games. They want to get on back on that roll like uh, they were on just before the Stillwater game, and they, last week they definitely, definitely – Got off on the right foot there. Yeah, they did not let that still water game, you know, weigh no him down at all. Third and 14, three receivers into the right side boundary, two to the field. Abrams waits. Quick pass down the wheel, wide open is number seven. Makes somebody miss. Uh, that's Devin Wilkinson, who is a freshman. There's one of those freshmen right there. Yeah, and he's taken down by number one, JV on Jones, you know. Our star-studded player. <laughs> yeah. Gets all the way to the 37-yard line. Pickup of 21 for a first and 10. 
and that was a great way to make a few people in the backfield, you know, miss by DJ Hall. He had a few people pressuring him on both sides, but he's able to get the ball out and get the first down. Nice pass, too. That one, he looked yeah. like he had a little bit more confidence. The first two have been, been kind of shot puts. He didn't look like he was real comfortable throwing. So, again, three wide receivers into the boundary to the right, and we're going to have one of them jump the gun. The freshman got a little bit anxious. He was going deep, it looks like. <laughs> He was excited. Yeah. I think he's like, yeah, I'm going to go deep. And uh, went a little bit too early. And that's going to bump him back, I uh, believe, five yards? Five yards, yeah. yes, sir. Back to the 32, it looks like. Uh, first down and 15. And after getting that first down immediately being pushed back, you know, you got to wonder how what they're thinking about and if they can, you know, ignore it, get back on their feet, keep driving down the field. That's right. Now they converted the 14-yard deficit on third and 14 a minute ago. So quick sprint out on the left side. Hall tries to make another guy miss. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, brought down by number 46 or 48. That's 48, Maddox Canty. Maddox Canty, nice play by Maddox. You know, they, they were DJ once again trying to, you know, get out of their arm's reach and – Maddox able to get in there and pull him down. Great pursuit. Um, you know, the thing that you got to do when you have a mobile quarterback like that is to keep your pursuit angles and don't don't let him get by you uh, on the outside and then uh, break down and make tackles. Yeah. It's difficult to do. It's not the easiest thing to do. And we'll see what North Class Northwest Classen does here as they're lining up. Whoa, receiver just went way over the line of scrimmage there. <laughs> Number nine, another freshman, Brandon Butler. Actually, they called timeout. <laughs> he did race up about three yards, and I don't know if he got confused, but they called timeout. That'll be the first timeout used. With seven minutes to go here in the first quarter, your antlers lead seven to nothing thanks to that touchdown. Uh, Deontay, Deontay Wilson. Wilson's 22-yard touchdown run on the very first play from scrimmage for the antlers. Uh, Classen gets the ball back. Northwest Classen got the ball back and um, have converted one first down. They're now facing second and 15. Ball on the Knights' 32-yard line. And I believe that touch uh, that timeout was by Deer Creek. I can't really see the refs' hands from my standpoint, but I think I saw him waving this. Uh, the scoreboard uh, is registering it on the Knights, so maybe uh, then it's the Knights that maybe took it the timeout. The and it's probably smart. Um, yeah. Get their get their guys back under control. Mike Riggs is the head coach over for Northwest Classen. So again, Hall's in the backfield, takes the snap, takes a three-step drop, a little pass across the middle again. And it's number seven. It goes all the way down to the Deer Creek 43-yard line. Devin Wilkinson again. And what a pass there by DJ Hall. He, he had two people immediately crashing in on him. He found that route. He hit it perfect for a solid gain. Gain of 24 right there. So two, two nice plays by the Northwest class in offense to get them first down, both converting a third and long and a second and long. And now they're driving. You know, they didn't let that touchdown get on them. They're going to keep driving downfield. We'll see what they do with the rest of this drive. Trips to the right, going in motion is number three, Kalen Crawford. Quick pass out to the uh, left side. Deer Creek's all over it, and they're going to bring him down for a loss. Once again, that's number 48, Maddox Canty, able to get in there, shut that play down. As nice pursuit, yeah, absolutely nice yeah. pursuit. That's going to push him back about two yards, maybe one and a half. So second down 12. No, they've they've beaten the odds before. Yeah, so. I was just getting ready to say that, partner. <laughs> You're exactly right. They it doesn't seem to bother him when they're getting these long d down and distance. So yeah, all again ready to take the snap. All all by himself in the backfield. They got five wideouts. He's What's going deep, pressure? and he overthrows. Looks like he's he overthrew number four, Khalil Rankin. And yeah, once again, that pressure coming in on him. He's barely having any time to throw. I, you know, usually you hear the standard is three seconds. I'd say he's getting even less 
as that defensive line from the Antlers is just crashing in on him every single time. Exactly. You've got, you know, Keegan Cochran, Peyton Hawks, and Logan Taylor up there. All those guys are over 250 pounds. Uh, well, Taylor's at 228. He's the lightweight. But still, you're looking at an offensive line that's made up of freshmen. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think our, our three rushing is going to be very effective tonight. So third and 12. Again, Hall sprints out to his left. He's looking downfield. He finds. Are they going to rule it complete? I believe he did catch it, but he stepped. No, they're going to. I think he had a foot uh, out of I bounds believe it's when he incomplete. caught it. Yeah, it must have been out of bounds. Pass was incomplete. So that sets it's him up with about fourth and 12. And we'll see if they go for it here. Instead of leaving their offense on the field. So fourth and 12. Looked like he caught it, but he must have been out of bounds. Yeah, I believe he had a foot out of bounds when he caught it. I agree. So here we go. 18 seconds left on the play clock. 5.26 to go in the first quarter. Deer Creek leads 7 to nothing. Northwest Classen facing a fourth and 12. Yeah, it looks like they're going for it. Pretty interesting choice here. Again, Hall sprints out to his left. He's looking downfield, nowhere to go. He steps out of bounds at the 49-yard line of Deer Creek. He's going to lose a lot of yards. And that makes a change of possession. That's a change Deer Creek of possession. Ball. Deer Creek will take over first and 10 on the, their half of the field. You know, at the looks like the 48 yard line. Check that 48 yard line. First and 10 Deer Creek. And that pressure got really got to DJ yeah, Hall there. He had to get out of bounds. He couldn't find anywhere to throw to. Lost yardage. Gave Deer Creek a bit of better. Yeah. He got happy position. feet and he got out of the pocket <laughs> a little bit too quick. And, he, and he's going to his left and it's awful hard to throw to your left. So anyways, first and 10 Deer Creek. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Pence drops back. He's looking downfield. He's got all the time in the world. Finds. Out of the backfield, there's Wilson now. He, he escapes. He gets down the field. He is tackled around the 30-yard 30, 30 line. And that's their second play of the game, and Deontay Wilson's really having the game of his life right now. You know, he got the 22-yard touchdown and a pretty solid game on the check down by Print, uh, Pence. It was a nice, nice look. He had all the time in the world. Deer Creek goes yeah. hurry up. First and 10, ball on the 30-yard line. Pence takes the snap. He's looking to his right. He throws out there again. And that's number seven, Bryson Rouse, able Bryson to get that. Bryson Rouse. He was our 100-yard pick six. That's so right. Had able to break nice a tackle there, get a solid gain of seven. Got down to about the 24. So it'll be second and, second and six, second and three. <laughs> second and, I'm sorry, second and four, second and three. But Pence again, they're going in this hurry-up offense. He looks downfield. He could run all day if he wanted to. And there he goes down the right side. Gets out of bounds, pushed out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Nice run. And to me, it kind of looked like that defensive line gave up, you know. They got through. I saw a lane for one of them to run through, and he just kind of stood there. So. Yeah, it's like they didn't know what to do for a moment. They said, oh, there he is. Should I go after him? Or, And again, that's youth. That is youth yeah. right there. Not In being experience. aggressive. Inexperience and youth. Pence this time sprints out to his left. He looks in the back of the end zone. The ball's, ca the ball's caught. What, what a, a catch. catch. Nice catch by number three, Michael, Michael Holly. Touchdown pass, six-yard touchdown pass. That's the senior. Michael Holly. Michael Holly. What a catch, honestly. You know, he's got I a mean, guy he was in front covered. of him. Yeah. He had a guy draped all over him. And, and he, he was able it. to pull it in. Nice play that puts the antlers up 13 to nothing with the extra point ready to be kicked. Northwest class and jumps offside, a little bit eager. Number 23, Geno Fuller, sophomore, jumps offside. So Miller will take another shot at it for the extra point. And Miller, honestly, a great kicker. I mean, he's been playing like his whole high school career and he's been kicking well the whole time, so. He's one of the best, one of the best I've seen. I mean, he leaves a no doubter on these kickoffs and so he gets the extra point with 4.38 to go in the first quarter. Deer Creek in, oh, let's see, a matter of four or five plays total have put up 14 points. We're going to take a quick break here, if you, and uh, we'll be right back here in just a few minutes. You're watching Deer Creek football on Antler Vision TV.
We're back. And uh, Deer Creek leads 14 to nothing early in the first quarter. Two drives, two touchdowns. Uh, Northwest Classen has had two drives and turned it over on downs both times. So actually they punted the first <laughs> time, but they got about a four-yard punt. on. The, so it was like they turned it over on downs. Kickoff went through the end zone again. I have a feeling Mr. Miller's leg is going to get a little tired tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he's been kicking it through like <laughs> out of the back of the end zone every time, you know. Yeah, he has. It's already the, what, third time he's had to kick Yeah, it's his third yeah. kick, second, <laughs> second extra point. Uh, yeah, he's, he's being <laughs> kept busy, yep. busier than anybody on the offense, that's for sure. All right, here we go. First and 10 for Northwest Classen. See if they can't. They had. They put together a nice little about 30-yard drive before they turned the ball over on downs on their last possession. Had a couple of nice conversions. He got a and jump there. Right tackle jumped. False start on the offense as that's going to push gonna him back. Cost him five yards. But once again, it's like it's that hasn't really affected him too much until that last kind of blurb there on the on the pass drive. But. We'll see how they we'll see how they recover here from that 15 yard distance. Looks like what they're trying to do is they're going to always have a check down receiver, someone close by that he can dump the ball to, and then they're going to send the other three or four a little bit deeper. So there's a check down over to the left. He goes to him, number seven again. The freshman breaks some tackles, makes a nice move just to get a couple of yards. And seven there taken down by number seven Bryson Rouse. That's his second tackle of the game, and he's been playing pretty well so far. As our, our corners are kind of keeping busy, you know. They're running around. They're trying to find their receivers, and then obviously our D-line putting a lot of pressure there on D.J. Hall. Yeah, they're making him go to that check down quick. So it's second down, 13, ball on the 17-yard line. The Knights put three receivers into the boundary on the left side, two to the right side. Uh, so far, Hall has been looking for number seven most of the night. And makes another nice pass another number to number three, Kalen Crawford, right there in the middle of the field. There's he gets out to the 32-yard line for a first down. There's that slant route once again that we saw earlier uh, in the last drive that gave him a first down as well. So that slant route appears to be working for him up the middle. Outside that first play where... Uh, Crawford dropped that pass. They have not dropped one. Um, they've caught one out of bounds, and Hall has thrown over someone's head, but he's been getting the ball close, and they've been catching the ball. Two receivers yep. to the right, three to the left. Again, first and ten. This time Hall's going to take it on with his feet. He does a quarterback draw, gets up to close to the 40-yard line. And you know, not a bad run. He had quite a bit of open space. Uh, he was making a few guys miss until he's finally taken down at about the 40-yard line. Picks up about <laughs> seven, second down three. Nice call by Coach Riggs. So they're picking Actually, up the it looks like <coughs> they're, they're picking up the ball. Not sure what the call is here, if there's a penalty or mm. looks like they're going to mark them off. Oh, false start. Another false start, so erase that last play. Gotta wonder why they didn't call it, you know, before the play. Hmm. So it'll be now back to the what, the twenty eight yard line. You know. First and fifteen. Gotta wonder if it's just the freshmen, you know, they're eager to jump. As time another, out on the yeah, field. Another time, time out. out. Northwest class and yeah, that's gotta be it, Kian. Um you're playing a a team that's really, really good in in uh Deer Creek. These kids, you know, they're freshmen. Um, they're wide-eyed a little bit. I mean, <laughs> they've they've had they've got five games under their belt, so it's not like they're just completely green. But still, when you go into somebody else's house and they're they're pretty good, uh, it's a challenge. They faced yep. they faced Dell City this year. They faced Lawton. Um, so they faced some pretty good teams and got blown out by them. Yeah. So I'm sure it's it's a. a you said it was 58 points per game. And I think their <laughs> closest game was 50 points. Yeah, I believe it was. Oh, uh, I didn't get I the scores. I think it was the first game, I believe. Yeah, they scored six points in that game. And then they get shut out three straight times. And then they score 12 last week. 
And actually, they scored their 12 points in the first half. Uh, they've scored all their points in the second quarter this year. So here we go. First and 15. All ready to take the snap. Again, we have a receiver, number seven, moving, changing his feet just before the snap, and he's going to get another penalty called on him. He doesn't know that he can't do that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> You know, those freshmen, they're eager. They, they want to jump. They are, they're ready to go. Well, this, that was just, I don't know if you saw it on the, on the uh, video, but he just simply sh moved his feet like he was, was changing which foot he wanted forward. It's kind of weird, and then they snapped the ball, and he hadn't got back set. So yeah, that 50 the penalty's point, automatic. That 50-point loss was to class in SAS. So was that the closest? That was their 50-point loss, yeah. So three receivers to the right, two to the left. First and twenty now. That pressure. Ball's popped in there. the air and it's picked oh, off. Does he get it? <laughs> <laughs> it took a while, but yeah. it lands in the hands of Will, of uh, Will linebacker Braden He's Beers, still up. who's still going. Touchdown. Braden Beers. Do we have a touchdown? It sure looks like it, but I haven't seen any official. I Braden. saw a flag down. There is a flag on the play. You're right. You wonder what the happened. The ball there. was batted in the yeah. air. It looked like number 39, Asher Van On, had it, but he <laughs> he kept bobbling he it. He bobbled it. So Braden Veers came in and was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll take that." <laughs> if you don't want it, I'll take it. So, <laughs> not sure what the call is. It must have been okay. We're going to have a change of possession. So Braden Veers makes an interception, but he doesn't get the gravy of the touchdown. <laughs> Because of a penalty. So we're going to start on our side of the field again. First and 10 on the 26-yard line. And Braden Beer's having a great game. I believe he has two sacks, and now he's adding an inter interception to that. So, you know, he, he's having a pretty great night for a linebacker. First and 10 on the Knights' 26-yard line. Deer Creek has not started one possession in their end of the field, <laughs> in their territory. Pence looks back. He's looking left. He's looking to go deep. He throws the ball deep just Ooh. over the head of number three, Michael Hawley, who court scored the touchdown pass just a moment ago. And I think if they're going to keep giving him that time, I'm going to have to, you know, set a timer. <laughs> <laughs> I just I Go just get your know. nachos, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you come back, he's still looking to throw. Great protection by the big hog mollies up front. We got uh, – I mean – He's Number having 70, Matthew Wade, Logan Taylor, 62, 74, Keegan Cro Cochran, Peyton Hawks at right guard, and Jacob Sexton is the anchor on the right side at right tackle. Second and 10, quick pass out to Holly again. Makes a nice cut. He's running the open field. He's down to the five, down to the four, maybe to the three-yard line. Nice pitch and catch there. And he is Pence. loving Michael Holly this game. He has the touch. Oh, speaking of, oh, never mind. He's getting back up. Okay, I got really worried there for a second. It's like he got down to the four-yard line. First and goal, pickup of 22 on the play. Yeah, as I was saying, he's he's really loving Michael Holly out there. He's the touchdown, and then he tries to throw the deep pass to him, and now the screen pass here for plenty of yardage. Little, little senior love going there, you know, <laughs> senior to senior. Uh, his normal favorite target has been around the corner. There goes Wilson in, and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's Deontay's second touchdown of the game. And after uh, last week only getting one touchdown, you know, to get two in the first quarter isn't so bad. Not bad at all. As I was saying, Berkeley Dalton has been the favorite receiver in the previous few games. But tonight, uh, clearly Pence is looking for Mr. Holly and finding him. He scored a touchdown, had a big 22-yard catch to set up the run by Deontay Wilson for his second touchdown to tonight for the junior tailback. And the PAT is good. So that'll make it 21 to zero for the Antlers. It's still about two minutes left in this first quarter. Two minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, and Miller's gonna go back out and exercise that leg again. <laughs> so what are your thoughts so far? You think there's gonna be a lot of maybe JV players getting to play tonight? Oh, definitely. I mean, if if not in the third quarter, then at least the fourth, you know. We're on track right now to beat them, what, 84 to nothing. Well, yeah, you know, the, 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 the thing is, you know, there are little glimpses of 
of brightness over there on the Northwest Classen side. There, they, are. there There is a few things that they're doing on the offensive side that's really good. And the fact that they have to play both sides of the ball it tires doesn't help. Quick, you know, we've, you know. Got, we've got just a few guys. Um, let's see, looking at our, our depth chart, we've got hmm, really Cyrus Shiling. He goes a little bit both ways. Um, Javion Jones. Oh, yeah, of course, Javion does. Uh, so here's the kick. This time he got under it a little bit. Looks like it's still going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Didn't get it over the end so zone So the kickoff time. team is getting their wind sprints in for Monday's workout. <laughs> They'll say, Coach, we don't have to run. We did it all on Friday night. So first and 10, Northwest Classen, again, on their own 20-yard line. And, you know, we're getting ready to see this Northwest class on offense. You know, like you said earlier, they're they're having those short glimpses, but, you know, nothing nothing too great in order to get them into that, that glory zone. This is one of those games where the time of possession really doesn't matter. Yeah. Because <laughs> Northwest class has had the ball the majority of the quarter, but they trail 21 to nothing with 2.18 to go in the first quarter. Hall takes the ball, snaps the ball out to his left. Again, he finds number three. Kaylin Crawford for a nice little nice little game. You know, not a bad gain there on first down. Able to get, I think that was a gain of about one or two. It's oh. like about three, about three. Um, yeah, yeah, that's as good as a run. That's the way they're looking at it. Those short passes out to the sides are just like a run. You know, if you got three yeah. yards on a, on a zone play or something like that, on a running play, then they would be happy with that, I suppose. But that's what they've substituted. They don't have a running game uh, other than – Hall using his feet to create space and maybe run a quarterback draw. Yeah, they used to tell me when I was playing football, you know, try three or four yards of play and you'll be good. That's your right, bud. That's your right. Here he goes again for the quarterback draw. Makes one guy miss. He runs out to the right side and gets a great block from number four. Ooh. He got kind of hit in the air there. Khalil Rankin made a nice little block there. Taken down by number 23, Braden Beers. So that's going to set him up with about third and one. It's to about the 29-yard line, third down one, like you said. That was a nice downfield block by Rankin. And you, and know, you saw that, that Hall He was making miss, guys miss, making yeah. Guys miss. And, you know, that's what you want to see from your mobile quarterback. I mean, you don't want him taking those kinds of hits, but you yeah. definitely want him making those guys miss. I believe their backup quarterback is uh, going to be Rankin, number four. He's taken a couple of snaps this year. But, again, the right tackle – Jumping reshuffled his foot, he kicked his foot up, and that is a penalty. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to sound ugly there, but that's they're, they're just getting ready, and I think they're not getting themselves set, and that's costing them big time. So now you, instead of third and one, you're going to have third and six. I think they're l hearing more audio cues than visual cues. Uh, they're not really looking at that football to know when to jump. They're listening to their quarterback, which – you know, fair enough, but. That's true. 42 seconds down to 40. This could be the last play of the quarter. Um, so that play clock play is Play clock's down to 10. Down. You're going to need to hustle up. Eight seconds. Five. They don't look like they're in a big hurry for anything. Three, two. Yep. They're going to call they're gonna delay of game on another that. Another delay of game. Unless they got a timeout off, but I don't believe they did. Well, another. So, you know, Northwest Classen is right now their own worst enemy. I mean. <laughs> How many penalties is that now? Four, five, six penalties on the guys so far. So that's tough. Definitely not win. what you want to see. So it's third and 11 from now they're 19. It was third and one, but two penalties have knocked them back. And yards. we're going to run out of quarter here, it looks like. Uh, five seconds, four, three, two, one. So we got one quarter in the books. And um, Deer Creek has dominated, although they have not had the ball that long. <laughs> They've dominated, and they lead 21 to nothing here at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back here in just a few mo moments. This broadcast is brought to you by Antler TV. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment.
And we're back. It's third down for the Knights. Third down and now 11 after two costly penalties. Uh, ready to start the second quarter. Quick pass out to number seven who drops the ball. This time Devin Wilkinson couldn't hang on to it. That's his second drop of the game, and both of them have been those, you know, short screen passes. So you got to wonder, maybe he's thinking about the guy that's getting ready to run into him, and he's kind of getting a little bit scared. Could be. So hearing footsteps is what they call it. <laughs> Going deep is Javion Jones for the punt. Now, the last punt only went a net total of four yards. So Javion definitely not lined up too deep. I'd say he's, you know, the 35-yard line. Um, I stand corrected, it was an eight-yard punt. So this time, um, we've got a bad a snap. A kind snap. of a, He gets it off. It's much better this time as it goes down the middle of the field. Jones picks it up at the 45. He gets out to the 40. He's still going, and he's brought down at about the 30-yard line, but we have a penalty on the play right there at the point of catching the ball. Looks like we're going to have a hold. Good punt return of about... 15 yards, though. About 15 yeah. yards. I thought he may have, bro may have broken away, but we're going to have holding on you know, the that's, antlers. That's the biggest killer of big returns. And, you know, after usually kick returns, long interceptions, you're, you're always checking the field, like, are there any flags? Are there any flags? Because, you know, it's, it's very easy to happen when you're kind of just trying to get your man and they're trying to break free. So that's that's the biggest killer of those. So big they're act yeah, you're big right. They're act I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk over you, bud. But they <laughs> they're actually going to start the ball on their side of the field this time, where they weren't a moment ago. So they're going to be on their own 44-yard line for first and ten. This is a first for Deer Creek this game. Yeah. Not Welcome too to far the other their own yeah. territory, but. So Pence is back. He's looking down the field, wide open as Mr. Holly. He's going to take it to the house. Five touchdown. Michael Hawley's second touchdown of the night on a 56-yard touchdown pass from Pence to Hawley. Second time they've hooked up tonight. And they're just loving Hawley tonight. That's his fourth reception. And, you know, they've all been, you know, big plays or touchdowns. So. Had a 22-yard catch, a touchdown catch of six yards, and this one goes 56 yards. Uh, I mean, he was all by himself, wasn't he? Yeah. No, like, if the closest man was five yards behind him, so. And he pulled away as he ran for the end zone. The PAT is good. That's so going to make it 28-0 to zero for the Antlers. A one-play drive again. It's this one. Second of the game. <laughs> covered some real estate, though, on a single strike. Pence hit it right on the money. Holly didn't slow down a bit. And the 5'7", 161-pound senior, Took it to the house for the touchdown. Good for him for senior homecoming night. The two guys hooking up and playing some ball together. And they're really loving those short but quick guys out there. You know, Deontay Wilson, two touchdowns on the night. He's 5'7", 168, and he's able to, you know, cut through, you know. And then Michael Hawley, you know, 5'7", 161. So both of those guys a little bit on the shorter end, but they're able to <laughs> – not I shouldn't be talking. Not that <laughs> <laughs> well, I was that way too. Not that we're not tree toppers, but boy, you can we can play ball, right? Yeah, but they're able to, you know, they're able to be quick and get through there, and that's what's working. So it's twenty-eight to nothing. Deer Creek is doing pretty much what we expected them to do: come in and take control of the game early. Um, Miller sets to kick off. He booms this one down. Going more towards the left, and number three, Kalen Crawford, watches it skip into the end zone. So He's getting closer and closer to landing it actually in play <laughs> with each <laughs> kick. You know, that's his fifth kick of the game. He's probably already getting tired. Might be. May need to go over there and stretch it out a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, games like this when you're on the uh, on the home side and you're, you're, you're winning easy, it's it's – it can get a lot of fun real fast, but I've also been on the other sideline where they look like they have about, you know, maybe 15 guys over there in uniform other than the 11 that are on the field. So it's it's tough. It's tough for these kids. And you got to wonder how they keep mor their morale throughout the season and, you know. It's true. Losing First these big and ten. games. Ball's passed and right through the hands of number seven. He was met there at the same time. And this time he was trying to hold on to it and – 
you know, he had about two guys, you know, come up on him and give him a good knock, and he let go. He had his hands on it, right? Uh, yeah. But, um, I mean, he, he had it for a second, but couldn't couldn't keep it. Not sure who was on the play. If that Was that Rouse or was that? I believe. Osborne. I, I, I believe it was Connor Hamilton. Okay, I saw Connor number Hamilton. 16. Number, okay, number 15. Is it? Or, or what? 15, yeah. 15, yeah. 15. All right, so we got second down and 10. Knights still on their own 20-yard line. Ball a snap. He's going to go deep. He's going to try to hit number seven, Devin Wilk Wilkinson, again, and it was way overthrown. He threw it about as high as the lights. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was trying to hit number seven or the 40-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> the old punt, pass, and kick days where they see how far they could throw it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, look, you saw right there number seven pulled up. Uh, you know, these kids are already tired. It's hot out there. Yeah. Um, a, a kickoff, it felt like it was 90 degrees, and we know down on that turf it's a lot warmer. It's a lot warmer. And the wind sure isn't helping. You know, that wind is carrying the ball. It's... It's taking it places you don't want it to go. It's, it's definitely not helping them out there. So third and ten. Again, Hall takes it. He sprints out to his right this time, and he throws it down in the dirt or in the turf. Not dirt, <laughs> but in the turf. Probably a smart play because he's about to get smacked and knocked down. So he got rid of it. I know I've said it a lot, but that Deer Creek defensive line, you know, they're, they're a presence, and they're letting themselves be known. So Edwin DeLeon is the punter, and this last punt was, was much better than his first one, so he's going to take a... He'll try again. See if he can get a snap. The last snap almost went over his spot, head. Yeah. It's a good snap this time. Gets the punt off. Not bad. Goes out of bounds. Looks like it's going to get spotted right at the 45-yard line, the Northwest Class and 45-yard line, so Deer Creek will take over there first and 10. That's about a 25-yard punt, so... Getting it from the, well, I guess he's starting at about the 10 when he's taking that, so 35-yard punt. Definitely not bad. Not bad. I mean, again, you're d if you're improving on eight, <laughs> 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 you're doing all right. Well, here we go. First and 10 for the Antlers. Uh, starting backfield still in there. Pence at the quarterback. Wilson at, at the uh, running back. Three receivers to the right. Pence drops back. He's looking deep on the outside. Nice catch. He was able to keep his feet in bounds even after the bobble. Nice catch by Gavin Smith. He's been quiet today. He's another senior out there. He's a pretty big guy, you know, 6'3", yeah, 173. He's one, he's one of the prototype looking receivers. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch and pitch and catch by uh, the two seniors there. Pence spreads out to his right. Again, he finds into the flat. Number 13, it looks like. Oh, he breaks a tackle. He could go. He's down to the five, down to about the two or three yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. It's number 13, Bryson Bryant. He was hit by number seven, Devin Wilkinson. But knocked out of bounds at about, looks like the two, two yard line. But we know, do have a flag. Let's see what we've got holding. I think at this rate, Deer Creek, you know, we, we would start running the ball, you know, trying to get that clock down, you know, get out of here. But we're, we're keeping uh, the problem. passing game. I think so. they got to keep their rhythm, though, and you know what they do. So the penalty is going to bring the ball all the way back to the 31-yard line. So that wiped out a really good play there. So from the 31, Pence again looks on the out route. This time he hits his his receiver, Mr. Berkeley there. And that was a good way for uh, Dalton. for Dalton to you know stand tall. He's able to keep his feet against that. I I didn't see who was trying to take him down, but he was able to hold onto the ball. You know, shake him off and get a few extra yards. So he got to the 17 for first and 10. Pence is gonna throw it here over everyone's heads. Wide open in the end zone. In the back of the end zone, we have a touchdown. That's that number is, 11, Gavin Smith. That's Gavin Smith. Smith for the touchdown. And, you know, we said he was quiet, and there he makes his there boom. Make, <laughs> yeah, makes. That was a 17-yard touchdown pass from Pence to Smith. Pence is about to pass his touchdown from last week, three touchdowns. He's got three touchdowns. See what Grayson. Smith is the holder here. 
You're going to get tired good. of holding it, too. I mean, that's the... <laughs> 35 to 0 for the Antlers. 35 nothing. And uh, that was a four play, 45 yard drive. Uh, actually had a penalty in there that brought back what was almost a touchdown um, but, you pitch know, and catch to, uh, what was it, number 13? They didn't really let it tear him down, so they just nope, went they right just, back they out just there. just went right back <laughs> in, and they hit, hit Gavin Smith in the back of the end zone, and he stands at uh, six foot three, so he's a big target. And he was a lot of fun already wide. I mean, all all Pence had to do was kind of throw it up there. and <laughs> He had about four or five steps on the guy, and he's standing in the back of the end zone. He makes the catch, and, and I, I'm happy for him because against Stillwater, he had that, that one touchdown where he was all by himself, it bounced off his chest, and he yeah. went to the turf, and he felt terrible about it. I talked to him after <laughs> the game, but he talked to his dad after the game. and He got over it, though, and it's good to see him make those two big plays there. Good for him. And the student section definitely having a great time out there, up 35 to nothing. So here we go, kickoff again. And I'm wondering if he's going to kick it through the end zone again. <laughs> I mean, we'll last see. time he probably hit it maybe one yard past the goal line. So we'll see what happens here. Deep is number four, Kalen Rankin, and number three, I'm sorry, Kalen Crawford, number three, and number four, Khalil Rankin. All righty. Miller pooches this one. Caught and dropped. Ball's on the turf. And Deer Creek's Antler's fall got on it. it. Looks like they've got it on the 22-yard line. Fumble. So maybe the strategy isn't to kick it too far. <laughs> well, I think they were – I don't know what they were – I mean, that's just a different strategy. you got to work on all of it. So and That was recovered by number 24, Z Green. He's a sophomore, 5'6", 141. He's able to get down there, fall on the ball. And out comes the Deer Creek offense, you know, led by Brett Pence, having a heck of a game, three touchdowns. And so Looks like number 12 oh. is coming out. Number 12 is Teddy, Teddy Amorosi. Amorosi. And that's their JV QB. All right, so we still have Wilson in the backfield, though. So Amorosi's going to take the snap. He gives the ball to Wilson. Wilson breaks a tackle, gets down to about the 14-yard line, pickup of about nine. Flag on the play. They're pointing to Deer Creek. And I, I said earlier, Teddy Amorosi is the JV quarterback, but they kind of got a couple guys, you know, switching in there. With that block in the back. For that offense. So down, they get down to the 14. They'll measure it off from the point of the foul. You get 10 yard penalty back to, sorry, back to the 25. But yeah, no, they, they've got a couple JV quarterbacks that they like to switch in between. That's number 10, Holden Siegel, and number 12, Teddy Amorosi. Okay. So this is Amorosi. And he rides in the ball to Wilson, who goes along the left side. Great block downfield. He gets down to the 10, the 5. That offensive line and, and those receivers. The, great great blocks out there, you know. Great point. Great point because those receivers are terrific blockers. And not a lot of people talk about that. A lot of people bring up the offensive line. And, yes, offensive line probably doesn't get it enough recognition as they should. But also those receivers, when they're blocking, they're able to, you know, they, they make their statement as well. That's the first thing I noticed about those receivers is how well they block downfield. So it's first and goal, ball on the seven-yard line. Just gonna give it then back Wilson goes in, and he strolls into the end zone for a seven-yard touchdown. Seven-yard TD run, his third of the night. Deontay Wilson's having a touchdown party <laughs> afterwards. He's got three of them on the board, 18 points scored tonight. Uh, great night for the junior running back. Him, Michael Hawley, and Brett Pence, you know. <laughs> And Gavin Smith, he had one in there. Alrighty, Grayson Miller. Grayson Miller ready this. to put up the 42nd point if he kicks it through the uprights. Smith holds, the ball's up. It's good. So with 10 minutes, 28 seconds left to go in the first half, Deer Creek is dominating Northwest class in 42 to nothing. This kind of feels like one of my Madden games. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah, when you're, when you're on the... Uh, Rookie and yeah, you're playing the easiest difficulty and you're just running up the score. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much, does it? <laughs> doesn't take much. 
but yeah, and that that Deer Creek offense is definitely moving with still so much time left on the board. Thing I like I see over there on the other sideline though, Ken, is the the fact that those coaches are over there and they're all coaching these kids. They're all talking to, you know, there's four or five coaches over there and they're all giving instruction. They're all talking about what you need to be doing. They're working yeah. with these kids and that's that's a good sign. They're not throwing they're their not hands up, up and on them, yeah. You know, saying, "Oh, we got freshmen. We can't. We can't win." They're coaching them up, and that's what you like to see in high school football. And honestly, that's that's great to see, especially for these, you know, these Northwest class and kids out there. You know, with probably a little bit of morale loss. You know, they're losing every game. They're, but those coaches, you know, they're keeping them. Say, keep your heads high. You know. Yeah, that's the morale part, the coaching part. You know, they're staying. Obviously, they're staying positive. You know, they're just out there to have fun. So again, a little pooch kick. This goes to number seven, Devin Wilkinson. We, we've called his name quite a bit. He's got the fair catch. The it's like 21. he caught it about the 21. So they're going to start first and 10 instead of the 20 from their 21. And the name I've yet to call tonight is uh, the homecoming king, number 95, Victor Osmussen. Uh, I... And I'm hoping we'll be able to call that name at least once tonight. <laughs> you got to like that name, huh? Yeah. He, he, he runs a little uh, defensive end. and or Actually, he's a, it's like he's the backup defensive end. Uh -huh. They run three-man front, and their ends are actually out there on the tackles, on the offensive tackles. So there we go, first and ten. Quick pass to Rankin. He breaks a couple tackles, gets upfield, maybe picks up one, maybe two. Eventually taken down by number 37, Britton Brewer. That's our outside linebacker, you know. And they're able to hold him to a gain of two. That'll make it second and eight for the Knights. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not getting away from what they do. They're not panicking. They're going to continue to throw the ball, look for the short pass on the check down. And, I mean, uh, it's I'm been working for them. I'm, I'm wondering if he's ever going to just, uh, the quarterback's ever going to decide to, let Take me see what himself. I can do. Yeah, because yeah, he's he's awful hard. He's slippery. He's hard to tackle. He's but proven that. I mean, so far this Deer Creek defensive line, you know, they've been able to you know keep him contained, as you see, because they're crashing in from either side, so he doesn't really have a lane to get out of. Ball's on the ground again. It's caught, but I think he got it back. Lost all the way back to the 15-yard line. Loss of eight. And Look like I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you can. Uh, it looked like they, they were going to try a little fake screen and then jailbreak down the field, but they covered it, and then they threw it to the screen guy anyways. And Deer Creek was, as one old coach told me, he was all over him like a rat on a Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> he had nowhere to go. And, you know, y you don't see it a lot anymore. It's not really talked about, but sportsmanship, especially in games like these where it's blowouts, is great to see. You know, I saw a couple – players helping each other up from opposite teams. And, you know, that's that's just great to see, especially in high school football. You know, you're still young. It, it's just a good thing. Third and 15, he's got a receiver, number three. Kalen Crawford was wide open, running all by himself, but he was overthrown by a good seven or eight yards. I think he's really loving that 40-yard line this game. <laughs> yeah, he's, Second time he, he's thrown it. <laughs> maybe he needs to wait another couple of seconds, let that guy get to the 40, and then yeah. do it. Yeah, because that's... That's tough. Second time he's passed to the 40-yard line. And that time, though, he had he had somebody wide open, and uh, he caught it. He No one was going to catch him, I don't think. Yeah. So here's the punt again. You got 35 last time. One this time even kick, better. Nice kick. Fielded by number 30. Oh, wow, look at him go. A lot of space. Not sure who that number 13 Bryson Bryant. Bryson Bryant makes a nice return from the 50 all the way down to well, it looks like they're going to spot it on the 22-yard line. And the punts are only getting better. <laughs> that time got it about 45 yards. You know, They're only going up from that eight at the start of the game. Yeah, 28-yard return on the play by I believe, yeah, it was 13, Bryce and Bryce Bryant. Bryce and Bryant, yeah. Bryce and Bryant. And yeah. now it's number 10, Holden Siegel out there. 
And he's the other JV quarterback, correct? And they yes, got a, and they brought in their backup running back, number 32, Mason Miller, who is a got real it. truck in the well, JV yeah. games. Boy, he runs hard. He's going to score. He's shown it no off problem. there, yeah. Another touchdown. I mean, Mason Miller, number 32, six foot, 200 pound sophomore. He and uh, S S S Senjay? Senjay? Shinji. Shinji. Shinji are two sophomores that get some playing time here on the varsity level. Yeah, and Mason Miller, you know, I see him a lot in the JV games. They're giving it to him, and he gets those hard rushes. He's breaking tackles. He's, you know, going straight through the gut of the defense, and He's it works. a lot different than Wilson. He yeah. kind of goes. He's going I straight like, to the like gut. I like how he was running with his ball covered and protected yeah. the whole way. And he didn't stop until he found pay dirt, <laughs> and we are at 8 minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the second quarter of the first half. Deer Creek's in a blowout right now, winning 49 zip. We're going to take a break here. Uh, we'll be back here in just a few minutes. This is Deer Creek Antler Vision Television. And we're back. 49 nothing. Now the Antlers. Kick. Number 30, Adrian Aramvula out there. Okay, we got another kicker. So I think they've already brought in their JV team. I believe so. I think that's the wise thing to do. The last thing you want to see happen in a game like this is, is get somebody hurt, one of your top-line guys. So yeah. looks like it's going to be returned by number four, Khalil Rankin. He goes over to the right side. He's got a little alley. He runs up the field, breaks a tackle, gets all the way out to about the 33-yard line. Nice return. You know, a good return there, you know, bringing it back to the 35-yard line, you know. Able to keep your wits about you, you know. Made a few guys miss him. Yeah. As out comes this JV defense, you know, the backups. We'll see how they handle here. Yeah, well we don't get, we have to get the depth chart out. Um, <laughs> see who all's where now because uh, this is definitely a new group. And they've brought in Victor Ausmussen. Oh, you got to call his name. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> our homecoming king out there on the on the field. He's playing our defensive tackle out there against the center. So he's the nose guard. Okay, yep. a nice little quick pass. Ball's on the ground. I think on that play. was supposed to be a uh, jet sweep, and it didn't quite work out. Loss of about five, four. There's a flag on the play, and it looks like they're – wonder what they're going to do there. I guess nothing. <laughs> Second and 14. There's my depth chart. Yay. I don't have the numbers, so I better get the one that has the numbers on it so we can see. Here's our defense. There's our backups. All righty. All right, here we go, second and 14. Hall takes the ball. He sprints out to his right. Wrapped up. Great play. Nice play by number 50. Yeah, that's that's number 50. Will, Will Cockrell. Cockrell. Sophomore, 5'10", 171 pounds. So a lot of these sophomores really getting playing time out there tonight, you know. Getting to show off their, you know, young, their younger skill, you know. And like we said about this Northwest class and team, you know, they're a bit inexperienced, but, you know, the little bit of, you know, Friday Night Lights game time. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't, you cannot replace this, this kind of thing, this atmosphere. You can't simulate it in JV. You cannot simulate it in freshman. When you're playing under the lights and you're playing on a Friday night, that means something. And so these kids getting this opportunity, it's huge. So here we go. Third and 16. Oh, Hall gets wrapped up. Looks like we're going to have a sack. Number 95, Victor Osmussen. That's our homecoming king with his first sack of the game. Good hit there.
or as my coaching buddies would say, fourth and forever. <laughs> <laughs> Long way to go. Clock continues to move. It's five minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first half. Deer Creek leading 49 to nothing. They've not been stopped yet. And they're uh, they've scored on every possession. So all you math kings out there, how many possessions have we had if <laughs> we've scored every possession and we have 49 points? Nice kick. This was a more Ooh. of a line drive. Hits number 13 again. Bryson Bryant, he's looking for room to run. He's got something on the right side. He's still working, and he's brought down, looks like at about the 39-yard line. And a solid return, you know, keeping it in Northwest class and territory, you know. They've been doing that all game. I think yeah, they have how lived. many possessions? One that they've they, Yeah, started. one possession. And they and it was on the 44, and it was a one-play touchdown. One-play touchdown, yeah, the 56-yard uh, touchdown. I believe it was to, was it Gavin Smith? That was that was Holly. Holly, that was, Holly. That was our man, Holly. Gavin Smith got a touchdown later. <laughs> yes, he did, the 22-yard one. All right, here we go. First and 10, ball on the 39. So we're going to have a stop and play, another penalty. Timeout. Timeout. Northwest Classen. I think that's the last of the half. I believe you're correct, sir. And that's. They had one left. Now they have zero. So that that's the last of their timeouts. Uh, yeah. And you have to use them. I mean, you, there, this is all about coaching right now. This is yeah. about you know, like we talked about a moment ago, keeping their morale up, letting them know that they're going to make mistakes, but. That's what do they okay. learn from yeah. these mistakes? Can they handle the adversity? It, uh, Forget the scoreboard, yeah. right? Especially with all those young guys out there, you know. You're really wanting, you know, what are we going to learn from our mistakes, you know? How are we going to build on those and get better in the future? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And my brother would tell me about his football experiences, and, you know, they would always tell him after every touchdown, you know, it's 7-0, to zero, or after every game, you're only 1-0. and oh, So... So quarterback Holden Siegel is in there. He's one of the JV quarterbacks. He's a five foot nine, hundred sixty three pound junior. Uh, I'm sure he'll be competing with um, number twelve Amorosi for the quarterbacking spot next year. Ball's handed off to looks like thirty two. There's Mason Miller. Mason Miller again. And you know. When he's out there, he has a presence, you know. He's that big guy. He's going to get through everyone. You stand in his way, you're getting hit. He's not afraid of that contact. Pick up a seven. So Miller's having himself a nice yards per carry night. He's got a touchdown for 22 yards, and that one went for about seven. So he's picking up about 15 yards a carry. Nice yeah. night. Nice start. Definitely not afraid to get hit. He wants to go through those guys, not around him. Yeah, the coaches are milking the clock. They're doing what they need to do to make this game go a little faster. So second and three. Again, Miller takes the ball, cuts over to the left side, finds some running room, gets downfield. He's got about four Knights dragging him down at about the 24-yard line. And another good gain there. You know, he's, he's keeping his feet moving. He's trucking through. He's looking to push it further and further downfield. Pickup of eight. First and 10, clock's running. It's going to get closer and closer to that three-minute mark. About three minutes, you're right. And we're working the play clock down to about 15. Coach is waiting, taking his time. Definitely trying to get it as low as possible, you know, trying to get rid of that clock. First and 10, get to halftime. Again, Miller up the middle. Runs over two, three, still carrying the third one. He gets all the way down to about the, I believe that's the about the eight, yeah. seven or eight yard line. And <laughs> seventeen yard gain for another first down. Kind of feel bad for some of those Northwest class and guys, you know. Yeah, two hundred pound <laughs> kid running over you. He ran over the first two guys, and the third guy hung on for dear life. <laughs> and was drugged for about five or six yards, wasn't he? Yeah. His knee actually went down at about the eight-yard line. It's like that one Old Spice commercial with Derrick Henry and all the guys holding on to him while he's <laughs> on the treadmill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First and goal on the eight. First and goal on the eight. Three receivers to the right. Again, Miller takes the ball. He runs to the left on a sweep. Gets to about the five. Tries to stay in bounds there, you know. Keep his tippy toes in, but not quite. Not a good gain, but, you know, they're just trying to work that clock, get closer and closer in. 
I believe there's a gentleman's agreement in play here because the clock is not stopping, and that's fair. He went out of bounds, and so they're going to keep the clock rolling. I noticed they kept the clock rolling after the timeout, so 15 seconds on the play clock, a minute and 35 to go in the first half. Deer Creek up 49-0. We're seeing a lot of substitutes playing right now, a lot of kids that play. There's Miller again. He's going to walk into the end zone for the five-yard touchdown. And, you know, he's loving it. <laughs> Getting to play varsity for what's probably the first time, and he's got two touchdowns already. He's got two touchdowns, and you know, I tell you what, is, is, like I said, it, there's nothing that can replace Friday Night Lights. Just nothing. And so he's going to carry these memories for a long time. I mean, he may be really successful later on, but he's going to remember those two touchdowns. Possibly more. Possibly I mean. more, yeah. So the minute and 10 seconds to go. Clock is still running. Ball is kicked through. And it's good. So with a minute, about a minute to go. Kicker on that one was number 30, Adrian Arambula. So. Okay, so Miller's leg is going to get a break. He's going to go put it on ice. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, looks like they're going to run the clock down to the end of the first half. And we're going to go to our halftime activities here on Antler Vision TV. And you know, we, we've seen blowouts against Northwest Classen, but. I don't think anybody's <laughs> hung 56 <laughs> on them in a half. But yeah, I think, th I think the most points scored against them was 64. I, ag I agree, you're, you're correct. So it looks like they're gonna just wait this one out and uh, head to the locker room comfortably ahead. Scored on every possession. There's not much we could say as far as recap <laughs> uh, other than that the – oh, we got someone doing some push-ups. Yeah, he is going to be student section is having a time. Who is this poor soul that's having to do 56 push-ups? <laughs> I think they do it every time we is score. That, yeah, so he's – is that a teacher or is that a student? I, that's definitely a teacher. <laughs> he's bitten off more than he could chew. That's going to bring us to halftime. Antlers up 56 to 0. We're going to take a quick break here, uh, here at Heflin Field. We'll be back in just a few moments. This is Antler Vision Television, Deer Creek.
And we're back for the second wow. half of Homecoming 2021 here at Heflin Field at Deer Creek. School record of some sort, Just, uh, I would think. Wouldn't you think? I mean, in one half. In one half? In There's one no half. way that that could have ever happened before unless, I don't, I yeah, yeah, maybe in the deep dark archives somewhere that by the way antler division has a lot of those archive films <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe find something but this is this is unique we've this scored four touchdowns in each quarter yeah if we, we hold have scored to that. It, scored every time we've touched um the football um here's a few stats for you with the offensively 278 yards total offense uh, we've talked about the fact that um, they've scored every time they've touched the ball. They've only had the ball on the wrong side of the field or the uh, uh, visitor side of the field on their own in their own territory one time, and they scored on in one play, a 56-yard touchdown pass. Every other possession has started inside, inside their, the their, yeah. their, their, on the good side of the 50-yard yeah. line, and um, so. 278 yards total offense. They've run the ball 10 times for 127 yards for a hefty almost 13 yards every time they touch it. I think the crazy thing for me is if we continue, like we scored four touchdowns in each quarter. If we continue to do that and hold them like we are, we should win 112 to zero. <laughs> You're doing your math again. There you <laughs> go. Good job, young man. Uh, Brett Pence has been amazing tonight. He has really, yeah. really been on fire. He was 9 for 10 for 151 yards and I believe four touchdowns. I think the 151 yards may have put him over the 1,500-yard mark for the season, and we're only just now into the start of the second half of the year. So he's got, he's got a great, great year in store coming up. Um, you know, if he keeps yeah. at this pace, over 3,000 yards passing which is clearly a goal I think he can get to. Um, that would be impressive. Uh, Deontay Wilson has had two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Yeah. two touchdowns. Michael Hawley's had two touchdowns. You know, we kind of forgot about old Michael. He had quite a start. The first quarter belonged to him. He had a really nice catch for a touchdown, six-yard touchdown uh, catch. And, and then he also he, had the 56-yard he had the 56-yard that uh, he took to the house. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and all in all, just a solid offensive and defensive performance, Kim. Yeah, and you can't forget about Mason Miller, you know, coming in there, you know, at, at, at the end of the second quarter, able to put up two touchdowns. And We'll be talking a lot about him in the second oh, half. I'm sure, that yeah. I'm sure it's going to be pretty much exclusively JV players <laughs> and even backup JV players here in the yeah, second half. I wonder if they'll go to their third string. I, I mean, it, you know, let's we talked about that before the game, that this could be a game where Coach Stanley can really get a look at some Just of the up and comers, play, yeah. the kids that they think could be pretty good. You put them out underneath these lights, and you can see a lot of things. And uh, how they handle pressure, you know, how the, how they can really see the field and right, right, and see how they handle, you know, playing in front of a lot of people under the lights on Friday night. And you know, to be fair, Northwest Classen would feel a little bit better about competing against. More guys their age. Exactly. Yeah, because uh, that's remember? definitely a big yeah. attribute to it. Like, you you scale this team to like a lot of freshmen and sophomores, younger guys, to a team like Deer Creek, who's mostly seniors. starting seniors and juniors, and that's really upperclassmen and lower class. You can't really compare the two, and it's just uh, the not only age, it's the the mentality you have as you get older, it's the experience maturity, you gain. Maturity, yeah, maturity, yeah. It's, all there's so many factors that play into it that just, it, it kind of makes it a bit of a mismatch. 100% agree with you there because, you know, n n but now the, the field will tilt back a little bit where it's a little bit more fair, I guess, if that's the right word, I don't more even, competitive. I don't even think it's too big of an issue with skill. I, I think it's just a lot of, you know, m maturity, you mm -hmm. know, experience and I, I think they have the skill to do it they just don't have the experience yeah you're exactly right and I think Hall might have a better half yeah and you know the three seniors that play that, that, that touch the football the most are Hall Crawford and Rankin and then of course the freshman Wilkinson um, he's had a few touches tonight uh, 
So it's, it'll be interesting. We'll see. We'll see what it has. I mean, I'm sure that there's going to be some sort of running clock here. Uh, I, yeah, I believe so. They did it, you know, to end the half. I don't see them going back to standard time <laughs> regulation. Um, been in, you know, in eight-man football, this game's over. Oh yeah. You know, and uh, if you're ahead by 50 points any time during the game, the game's that's it. It's called the mercy rule, and that's only done in eight-man football. I think they used to do it uh, in 5A. I, I can't really recall. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been. Not as long as I've been in it. <laughs> and that's, we're looking at 30, I won't, I won't say, that's <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> and we've never had a, you know, and back in the day, uh, people didn't score points like this. I mean, yeah, no, it's, as we've kind of moved, like, further along, you know, football has become more, like, offensive, you know. Absolutely. Big the game has opened up. I mean, yeah. even Northwest is, is running a five-out offense, which is very unusual to see that every down. Um, yeah, and, you know, kind of, like, f it used to be, you know, the the big thing was, you know, the Bears, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, their defense. Three yards and a cloud of dust. And then you, you have 20, you have 2018 Rams and Chiefs. What was it, like highest scoring Monday night football game, 54 to 51? <laughs> so th how things have changed is crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're getting set. We got the kick, and it looks like. It's number 87. Yep, 87. Uh, Jake, Jake Sullivan. Sullivan. Yep. Jake Sullivan. Six foot, 140 tight end. Picks looks up like that ball. We'll get the ball on the 31 yard line, starting on theirs. Uh, their own 31-yard line for first and 10. Get this second half going. First time in a while. Clock <laughs> is going to be running continuously, so this this half could go a little bit faster than the first half. Hopefully, you know. People always think Yeah, and you want to get out of this game without anybody getting hurt. So in the backfield, yeah. looks like we got number 23 or 33, Jalen Kirk, who takes the ball, goes to the left side, rounds the corner. Makes it makes someone miss him, and he gets down the field all the way past midfield to about the 50, right at the 50-yard line. And that's another big JV guy, you know. Uh, when I'm watching those, him and Mason Miller are kind of like a double-headed monster. You have Jalen Kirk, who's kind of, he's, he's a little, he's once again one of those little speedy guys. <laughs> Jalen Kirk, 5'9", 185, compared, junior. Compared to that of Mason Miller, 6'202", two two, and he's right. barreling over guys, so. A double-headed monster, you know? Yep, the uh, thunder and lightning. <laughs> uh, Miller's definitely going to bring the thunder, and maybe Kirk's got a little bit of lightning. Um, we'll see them a lot next year. Well, not to tell you, Deontay's going to be back. He's just a junior, so. But uh, to have that, you know. That depth. Yeah. Yes. Because you can play any one of them. And you, we talked about it with Stillwater at least a little bit. First and 10, number nine is that quarterback, Eli Dunn. He takes the ball on a He's registered read as option, and he gets down to the 40. <laughs> gets down to the 45-yard line. Or outside linebacker. I don't know why I said offensive. But, y yeah. Second down and five. We, we talked about it with Stillwater saying how they, they can just switch out their running backs, and, you know. Oh, and all, that made a big difference. Tired. Yeah. Made a big difference, didn't it? Because they're able to wear out our defense, and if we're able to do that next year, you know. Absolutely. Wear out defenses with three running backs, you know. That's, that's crazy. I agree with you. I agree with you. That could be the way to go next year. Again, Kirk takes the ball, cuts back out to the right side, gets across the 35, down to the 30, up to around the 29-yard line. Nice gain by the junior. You know, you said lightning. <laughs> there There's you go. There's the lightning, right. Quick <laughs> strike there. Quick strike. Goes from the 45, pickup of 16 yards. You know, and like you said, it looks like they're maybe rolling towards another touchdown. And they, their their goal isn't to strike quick anymore. They just want to slowly the roll down the field, get the clock down. They still want to end up scoring, of course, but I just not as quickly. I don't <laughs> think we'll see a pass thrown by in the Deer Creek half. in the second half. So number nine, the quarterback, again, hands it off. Same play to Kirk. He goes and gets about another nine yards. And I wonder if they're using the outside linebacker as a quarterback choice, you know, because he's a bit, you know, it's not that hard for him to hand it off and kind of just get out of there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, sometimes you just take, uh, Wouldn't what is risk. he, uh, 
he's a senior, so yeah. uh, obviously, you know, over process of time, he's found other places to play because Pence has been the guy. Yeah. Uh, same with, uh, I believe, Gavin Smith. Gavin Smith had, you know, as a freshman, was playing some quarterback, but but they both found places to where they can contribute to the team. Kirk takes the ball on the left side, bobbles Ooh. the ball, but <laughs> hangs on. He's, he's able he pulled to a catch his pulled own. a, a Jevy on there. You know? <laughs> Last week, Jones was <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Jones was bouncing the ball around every, everywhere. So he loved to drop it, but it always ended up being a good play. Pick up a five, first and ten. You hearing some music? I am hearing some music. Why are we hearing music? I don't know. Why are we hearing music? <laughs> First and 10 on the 16-yard line. Hope you guys are enjoying the music. <laughs> we are. I don't even know if they can hear it. They're just running that play for all dry, though. This time, oh, oh nice play. Quarterback keeper. <laughs> and <laughs> number nine. Not only did they fake me out, Eli they, faked our, Dunn. they faked our cameras out. <laughs> For a 16-yard touchdown run, and we have a penalty. Oh, holding on the offense. Oh, that sucks. Saw that coming. <laughs> but, yeah, no, they faked our camera out. The camera was following. Well, yeah, we're following Kirk, Jaylen and Kirk. so was I. I think all of us <laughs> were following Kirk. And then uh, what a play. Dunn pulled it, and nobody around. Well, you know Ball goes back to the – I'm sorry. Go back to the goes back to the 22 on the penalty. They were just kind of, you know, handing it off, handing it off, handing it off. So, I guess – you know, that defense kind of finally got adjusted to them, giving it to Jalen Kirk. Yep. And Eli Dunn, you know, keeps it. They will get a huge rush. Sucks well, that it got first and back. 16, Dunn takes the snap, gives the ball to Kirk again. He spins out of a tackle in the backfield and manages to get past the 20 down to, looks like, about the 18. You know, not a bad run there. He he was about to be hit in the backfield. He's able to spin out of it, you know, keep it going. And you got to love that, you know, some of the younger guys and some of the guys that don't get to play are, you know, they're getting yeah. their spotlight. Yeah, get, yep, getting their spotlight. Got about four yards on that. Second down, about a long 12. Short 13, but uh, second down. Running the clock. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. This is not like the first half, is it? Where we were not looking up and it was 21 <laughs> nothing and still eight minutes to go or nine right. minutes to go. Yeah, it was taking a while. So here we go. Second down 12. Kirk again takes the ball, weaves his way through the middle, runs over a few guys, and gets down to about Does he get the yardage though? The eight yard line. Looks like that's gonna be good for a f close to a first down. I think that's gonna be third and two, third and three. It's once again they're just gonna they're just gonna look over and they're gonna drain that play clock. They they I don't know if they wanna get out of here. I mean they're probably enjoying their spotlight, but you know. Great well, yeah, well, the guys that are out there, they're having fun, that's <laughs> for sure. But um, All right. and they want to score a touchdown. That's the thing. Dunn takes it again, cuts back to his left as he goes through the middle, and he crosses the goal line for a touchdown. No flags this time. They got him his touchdown. <laughs> they, they took it away from him, but they got it to him this time. So an eight-yard touchdown run for number nine, senior Eli Dunn. And they're going to bring out number 30, Adrian Arambula, for the PAT. And, you know, he's pretty solid on the JV hitting these kicks. So, see what he does that does here for the varsity. Ball's down. Kick looks good, looks up, and it is Kick good. Is so, good. five minutes to go in the third quarter. We have another touchdown. We still have not been stopped all night. Nine possessions, Nine 63 touchdowns. points. That play, that drive took up, oh, most of the quarter. And we had nine, nine play drive. That clock, that you know. <laughs> covered, let's see, covered 69 yards. And they're just going to keep and the clock running even after the touchdown. Kept the clock rolling. So we'll stay here and... Uh, Wait for the kickoff. And only one more point is needed in order to pass the record against Northwest Classen. So we'll oh, see. Oh, for the season? Yeah. yeah. We'll see if we can get there. Deer Creek taking their time. No, they're not trying to be too quick with it. They want that clock to run out. They 
sure the officials will, will push him when it's getting to the point where <laughs> they probably need to. Yeah. So at this point, you know, I don't know whether you feel bad or not for Northwest class and, you know, down well, to doing nothing. you know, you've got five kids that are injured that play. Three of them are starters. Yeah. Uh, two of them are linemen. I mean, do the math. It's it's yeah. tough. Yeah. I, I like the fact that they don't look like they're moping around yeah. or anything. They're they're still competing. They're and you know, as young as they are right now, maybe our freshman team would give them a ba battle. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, it, it's they're very very young uh, across the board. Maybe they're big guys. So here we go. Here's the kickoff with three minutes to go. Managed to burn a bit. Number four, Khalil Rankin takes it. He gets over to the right side. So that's going to place him at about the 25, 20-ish, 25. Yep, 23-yard line. It's like the 23, yeah. First and 10 for the Knights. Alrighty, and out comes this Northwest class in offense. We'll see what they can do here. Still running the five out, three to the boundary on the right side, two to the field on the left. Running in motion is number three. It's going to be a little trick play there. And we have another false start. I believe number seven, Devin Wilkinson, is out at QB. With uh, DJ Hall, he was out wide. He's out wide now, that's right, so... First and 15, a lot of penalties for the for the beleaguered Knights. A lot of penalties tonight. It's really hurt them, cost them a lot. First and 15, and you're right, looks like number seven, the freshman quarterback. He played, he's, he's listed as a quarterback. He's played wide receiver tonight. And they're it's trying to get him a bit of experience. Ooh. Whoa, tried to take a little quarterback draw, and he is gobbled up. Who was that? Number 93, Keegan Hagerman. 5'11", 200, senior, and th that is back to the 11, seven yard loss forever. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to try and count that. It's like 22, <laughs> 21, 21, over 22 the, over the PA. Yep. Actually, he's on the 12, so that would be 21, 21 yards. You got to get to the 33 for a first down, second down. Again, the freshman is now at quarterback. As and stoppage. We have a timeout. Timeout, Northwest Classen. There's about 49 seconds left in this third quarter. So this second half is going by pretty fast. Thankfully, yes. <laughs> I mean, that first half, you know, it was it was going by so slow because every touchdown you got to stop the clock, you got to get ready. And away and so there's a lot of time stoppage and high scoring games and there hasn't been a lot of incomplete passes which stopped the clock there haven't been a lot of people running out of bounds which stops the clock it just took a lot of time after touchdowns yeah. you score you know you eight touchdowns eight in the first yeah, you yeah. score eight <laughs> touchdowns it's going to take some time isn't that right look at the smiles <laughs> a lot of smiles on the home side homecoming yeah don't know if they do homecoming dances anymore or anything like that but you know homecoming i think they said they were going to but they didn't hmm with COVID, that's probably not a bad idea. But, you know, homecoming has traditionally been, you know, the biggest game on yeah. the schedule. Uh, it's kind of lost its luster over the years, but still, it's a big deal. And you love to see your team winning big like this. I mean, mm. for the past couple of years, you know, homecoming, we I don't think we've won. Yeah, mm. this is nice to get yeah, that back on the winning track. Second down, 21. Number seven is the quarterback, Wilkinson. He takes the ball. He's going to run right up the middle. Makes one guy miss, but he's not going to make two guys miss. Was that number 64? Like 64, I believe. Uh, that would be, oh, there is no 64 listed. 74, maybe Keegan? Uh, 74 is, yeah, Keegan Cochran. I don't see him in there, though. There's 94. Maybe it was oh, 94. Oh, maybe it was 94. Jeremy Yombi, senior, 5'11", 210. Big guy, you know. 
getting in there, getting his piece. <laughs> Third and 20. Got a, actually got a yard there somehow. But now it's third and what are they, what are they they're doing gonna with the sticks? The, they're going to let the uh, clock run out, and we're going to go into the fourth quarter. So Antler score once on their only drive of the, uh, ha of the <laughs> quarter so far. So with one quarter to play on a continuously running clock, we're going to take a break here. We're here at Antler Television, uh, Ant Antler TV. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back for the fourth quarter of homecoming 2021. Antlers comfortably ahead, 63 to nothing. Ready Northwest Classen, third ready down. <laughs> ready to see a comeback from the Knights. Third down and 20. Alrighty. Well, that might make the papers tomorrow if that happens. <laughs> Number seven, Devin Wilkinson takes a shot down the field, oh. and it looks like, is it picked off? It sure is. Picked off by number 34, Cash Odin. Five foot eleven, one sixty five, wide receiver. He's a junior, and you know that was actually a pretty good catch. I mean, yeah, it was a nice. I mean, he, he kind of he threw spun it. his body. He he got to that. You know, it so looked a little bit easy the way it was kind of floated up there because he was. Well, it was a jump throw, ball, and yeah. both of them went for it. And um, was it who was it? Um, Odin. Odin. Yeah, Cash Odin. Out muscled him for it and brought it down. Got himself in the stat book and <laughs> name in the paper, maybe. Who knows? First and ten for the Antlers. Looks like we've got Holden Siegel out there. Siegel back out. Number, number 36 in the backfield now. Number 36. And what a run he got there. That's Jacob Davis. Jacob Davis, sophomore, 5'9", 150. Yeah. Nice little run there by Jacob. Looks like we're trying everyone out. <laughs> it's down to the 26-yard line. Pickup of 17. Holden Seigel. I've been calling him Siegel. My bad. I think it is Siegel. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, I'll talk to the PA guy then. <laughs> He's following his lead. <laughs> I call him Siegel on the on Friday nights. Yeah. Uh, not Friday night, Monday, Monday nights. nights. So. Yeah. You do the PA, right? I do PA for JV, yes. That's great. So you've seen these kids. you know? Yeah, I've seen a lot of them, and I know how they play. Kind so of. So fill in the gaps here because <laughs> don't have any scouting reports on these guys. Oh, oh! did Ball's the Knights on the get ground. it? Looks like the Knights may have gotten it. The comeback has begun. <laughs> oh. Looks like we had a fumble and a recovery. But we lost a couple yards there. Back to the 28-yard line, second and 12. And we'll see how they recover. You don't really see a lot of that from... I don't think I've seen Holden drop it yet in those JV games, so maybe pressure's getting to him a little <laughs> bit. <and laughs> you never know. It yeah. looked like there was a little distance between him and too much distance. You know, for a lot of factors. There you go. That was a smooth transition there. Nice play by Davis. I think that was number 33, Jalen mm. Kirk. Is that Kirk back in the game? That is Kirk. Nice run by Kirk. They're Gets just back trying down to, to the 21 yard line. They're cycling Pick up all those seven. running backs. So pick up of seven, we got third down and five. We'll see if they try and do 
you know, they're trying to keep their uh, touchdown on every drive. So, we'll see if they can do it here. Third and five. Third and five. So, maybe one of the very, very few times they've even seen third down all night. I don't yeah. think there's been a lot. So, hand off again to Kirk. This time, there's two did, knights did that it. greeted him in the backfield, brings him down for no gain. And you wonder, do they go for it? Well, I mean, you you can't kick a field goal here. I don't <laughs> think you'd want to do that. So they're they're putting number three. They'll they'll keep Jacob it as Davis. vanilla. Go, I'm sorry. Oh, they, uh, they're sending out Jacob Davis. So okay. switching out running backs. You know. So Miller looks like he's done for the night. Uh, but what I was getting ready to say is they'll keep whatever play they run here as vanilla <laughs> as possible. Maybe I mean they will got pass it here. Sixty nine over there on the left tackle. He's not even. Uh, in the book. So here we go. Nice little sweep run there. There he goes. He's going. Davis gets Does into he get the it. Up, oh, he's going to be. Nope, he's got the touchdown. He was able touchdown. to stick his arms out there at the end. 21 yard t touchdown by number 36, Jacob Davis, sophomore. He was able to extend his arms at the end of the play. Just got over, and they're going <laughs> to hit the 70 mark, it looks like. 69 zip right now with 7 minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. And you love seeing the guys who don't get a lot of playing time, you know, get yeah, a touchdown, yes, uh, seeing them celebrate. It's 100%. I mean, we saw them jumping around there at the end. You, yeah. Again, we, we've been talking about this. This, yeah. is, this is their moment. This is great for them. They love it. PAT is good. That one isn't quite Grayson Miller-like, <laughs> but it got the job done. The point after works, touchdown you know. is good, and with six minutes, 50 to seconds to go in the game, we have a 70-point game, 70 to nothing. And I believe... I think that's going to do something for the averages, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been averaging 36 bet, points a yeah. game. What's <laughs> a 70 spot going to do? And we have just passed Lawton with 65 points. Uh, scored on the Knights. Yeah, scored on the Knights. So again, that's not you know that's not what the coaches are looking for. I but mean, but no, the kids but the kids that are playing, you can't <laughs> tell them not to play hard. You know, yeah. you can't tell them. You can't say, okay, uh, don't go out there and try. This is their moment, and they're going to go out. and They're going to go try to score touchdowns. Yeah, they're going to have a good time. And the defense is going to go try to sack the quarterback and go try to shut them down in three downs. They're not. That you can't tell football players, real football players, you can't tell them to shut down. And, you know, know it's high school, it's especially in high school, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot about having fun. You know, most of these guys probably won't go to college or the NFL. I mean, the statistic is just so low. So really in high school, it's about having a good time, you know, playing your heart out and going out there and having fun with, you know, the rest of the team. Ab absolutely. Because these are the memories that you you'll never forget. Yeah. Playing with your teammates and I think they nice little kick. Looks like number four, Khalil Rankin's going to try to pick it up. There he goes. He's got it. I think He's they got the ball about to twelve. Grayson Breaks about Miller two or out. three. Yeah, I think they brought back brought Grayson Miller for this kick. So <laughs> brought down at the twenty-yard line. First and ten for the Knights. Five minutes to go in this game. It's been a lot of fun, buddy. Has been a lot yeah, of fun. We had a good, we had a good, golf, good broadcast. Again, this 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 stream is brought to you by Antler Vision, the student-based, student-run program, which gives students the opportunity to receive hands-on training in the field of video broadcasting and programming. And we're going to be streaming the rest of the home games. So if you can't make it out here to Heflin Field, or if you're out of town, tune in. Catch us on the stream. You'll be glad you did. A little quick pitch to oh, he Rankin. He gets stood up. He gets loose. He gets stood up again. And finally, he's brought down for a big loss. You know, commentating that Stillwater game, that double overtime was fun. But, you know, yeah. winning 70-0 to zero is also I pretty fun like, to talk I about. Like, <laughs> yeah, I kind of like winning. <laughs> Both are fun. Both yeah, are fun. if we could have pulled a win out of that, that would, we would have had the extremes. We'd have the extreme win and the close nail-biter win. Yep. But was not to be a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but no Stillwater got beat. Stillwater got beat last week, so first place is still on the on the yeah, table for the for Del the Antlers. Dell City. Dell City is 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 I believe is still undefeated. I believe so. Um, yes. 
I don't know. I think Midwest City is too. So, oh. again, another long pass downfield. Wide opens number two, DJ Hall, who is the quarterback normally. He catches it and is brought down at the 49-yard line. Taken down by. It's the biggest play by far. I think it was number 34, Cash Odin, who took him down. Oh, I'm hearing 24, Z Green. 39-yard pass on the play. Brings up a first and 10 for the Knights. They are on the Deer Creek side of the of the field. That clock is ticking down. We're getting down to close to three minutes. Unless it's a big play. I don't know if they're going to have enough time to do much of a drive. But here goes number seven, Wilkinson, looking for some room over on the right side. Slips out, tries to go back to his it's left. A and he's a lot of black jerseys there just waiting for him. He's going to lose big time yards back to the. The one who finally got him was number 50, Will Cockrell. 46 yard line. He had a lot of guys. He was trying to make a miss, but in the end, he just kept losing yards. Yep, loss of five on the play. Second and 15. Two and a half minutes left in this game. As Again, they are putting some wide-eyed youngsters out there that probably wouldn't normally get a lot of. Maybe not yet. a lot of JV time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is this yeah. is that kind of deal. So here we go. Second down, 15. Ball on the 46. Another pass out into the flat to number, looks like number 19. That was a hard hit by number eight. Andre 80. Jones, who is the leading tackler for on the defensive side. Andre Jones. And number 80, Cade Bumgardner, had a hard hit there. And I've said his, few, uh, his name a few times on JV, so. 12-yard gain. We've we've ticked below two minutes. Below two minutes, third down three for the Knights. After Jones's reception. So there's potential with these guys. They've got some. Definitely. Again, another heave down the field intended Incomplete. for Khalil Rankin. Two guys, two Deer Creek antlers around him at the time. Number five, Carson Osborne, and number 24, Z Green. I believe the Green had a shot, but he kind of stumbled as he looked to <laughs> try to maybe take a shot at the interception. So incomplete you know, on that play. Younger guys, they get, I, I guess, I mean, you would get nervous. Friday Night Lights, you know, first ever taste of it. <laughs> yeah. Minute to go in the game, folks. We're going to shut her down here in about one minute. Exactly Antlers are enough. going to go two and one in district, five and one for the season. Convincing win over <laughs> a, a team that needs a little, a little time, a little time before they're ready to go. Quick pass out to the flat by number seven. Hits DJ Hall in the flat. He's going to get the first down. Yeah, Northwest class, and they have the guys for it. They just don't have the experience. So I think well, I well, said this. Well, they got the youth, and they yeah, yeah. the experience is going to make a big deal for those guys. So I said this early on in the game: give it three, four years, Absolutely. this team is going to be. They're going to be. They'll a be contender. more competitive. Yeah. They'll be more competitive. They may not be contenders, but they'll be competitive. You'll have to show up and and, and play well to beat yeah. them. Yeah. But again, oh, balls dropped. Got Ten seconds left in the game. Clock continues to run. Andre Jones was the intended target there. And goes incomplete, so that will be the ball game. Zeros on the Homecoming clock. win for the Antlers. Good guys win tonight convincingly, 70 net to, to zip. And it Keon, do you have anything else you want to add before we sign off here? <laughs> I mean, it was a great game, you know. I, I had fun talking with you. <laughs> All right, we had a good time tonight. A very, very short second half thanks to the running clock. Not nearly as many plays were called, but uh, – Still two touchdowns tacked on at got the end. The, got a touchdown every drive. Uh, that's 10 drives, 70 points. Impressive win for the Antlers. Next week, it's the Bombers, Rose Field. It'll be another game, like, much like the Stillwater game. Uh, a win down in Bomberland will put them in a really, really good position to be able to go to the playoffs. And still, they're in the hunt for either the district championship or a uh, home field first-round playoff game. We mm -hmm. shall see. So with no further delay, we thank you for joining Antler Vision Television TV. Uh, we look to see you in a couple of weeks when uh, the Antlers will be home again and taking on the Dell City Eagles. Until then, have a, a great, yes, sir, have a great weekend. Good night.